sex between two human beings should be very respected. And I believe that if we're monetizing that, and you know, I know there's free will and there's people out there who are in the porn industry and they like it, and I get that. Mm. I think it's taking away the identity of our society to some degree. It's eroding it. You have wonder what you would be able to do if you were the ultimate version of you, right? You would then have an easy time creating what you want. And yes, effortlessly enjoying life too. Now, you may know this already, the influence you have over your reality is far beyond what you've been told. Soon, you realize that your outer world is merely a mirror of your inner world, and we're here to connect the dots for you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to God Mode. Welcome back to another week of God Mode. Here with, as always, my good friend Brady Edwards. William is not joining us right now. He's in south of France, checking yeah. out some yachts. Checking out some yachts. Yeah, we're getting very interesting on the deck footage of some very cool yachts. Yeah. Uh, I tried stowing away in William's suitcase. It was not big enough. Well, you know, next time. Yeah. Just get a bigger suitcase. Too. We'll just get a bigger yacht. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to need a bigger yacht. I'm excited to see what he picks out. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to talk about what we've, this is an edgy topic, and I think it's part of the reason we want to discuss it is because it affects everyone, Yeah, and it's everywhere, and it's been around forever, but it's never been as accessible as it is now. It's never been as rampant, a fingertip tap away, and suddenly, boom, you are immersed in a world of things that don't serve you. We're talking about porn today. We're talking about the prevalence of it how widespread it is, and what it's doing to our minds in the background and in the foreground, uh, and then also some steps on how to control it, make sense of it, reconcile it, and move on. Yeah, I think it's a very important topic. And I want to start by saying that if you do feel like you have a porn addiction, you're probably not alone. Let's start there. There's probably, we know there's millions and millions of people out there who have this addiction as well. Um, let's start to have, I think the best place to start is a place of empathy and compassion, knowing that the addiction comes from something that is truly very powerful. And William and I talked about this on a previous podcast episode about sexual transmutation. Mm. Napoleon Hill talked about Think Grow Rich. It's how we create life, guys. Sex is how we reproduce. It's everything around us. It's the creation of life. So to be addicted to it, you might just be addicted to the feeling, the power that it's inside of you, but obviously there is destructive things going on in the internet with the porn industry nowadays and a lot of negative embedded suggestions Bro. in our society going on all the time that we're seeing, that children are seeing, that's just promoting it. I mean, we can go to the movie Barbie if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that one, skip that one. <laughs> yeah, I saw it and I was like, wow. A lot okay. of suggestions. Yeah. It's unfortunate. And I think I told you this, like in the movie theater, a group of family, and again, I have no judgment to how anyone else raises their children. However, there was a group of like nine, seven-year-olds at a birthday party there. And the movie just started out with a bunch of dick innuendo jokes. And I was like, okay, we're going to do this. There's anyway. children. <laughs> <laughs> but that's but that's why we're having this podcast discussion right. today, right? Because it's something that's just in our faces 24-7 almost, we feel like. And people are... There's some people out there having destructive behaviors. So we want to talk about some ways that why it may be happening, you know, to learn. That's what mental programming, that's what our, our company upgrades about, getting to the main decision of why we may be doing something, for what purpose, and then talk about some ways that we both feel like could help you today. Mm. I think uh, there's been enough data and enough studies that are starting to emerge now that clearly indicate that there is a rewiring that does happen, right? When someone consumes pornographic material, there is something that they're getting at the end of it, right? There's some sort of satisfaction, but what's happening leading up to that um, is starting to become like way more obvious that it has an impediment to your health. They think there's been this understanding in the past where it's like, it's not a big deal. It's this benign thing, you know, it, you, like looking at some attractive person and then, but it, it, it's just as time has gone on, as content has also become worse, right? Because there are tiers that yeah. I'm aware of where you start watching something maybe more benign. And then over time, that doesn't scratch the same itch. Yeah. And over time, that escalates and people start getting into eventually pretty terrible stuff. Like this isn't a judgment about it, but that that's an objective reality mm. is that this becomes a slippery slope. It's like a, like a drug for the mind 
where your tolerance seems for people, for other people to build up to it. I feel that this is, uh, I'm lucky here because in high school, um, I found myself consuming porn as a high school person, right? As a kid. So I'm 32 now, but I remember feeling like I was like, I'm looking at this almost every day and this is decades ago. What do I do? And it wasn't even clear then that there was a like data to show that this is an issue. I just already felt it. Mm. And so it's interesting that this happened because this led me eventually, I didn't realize to upgrade to uh, trance, to meditation. So what I did is I could feel that it wasn't serving me. Right. And if the person listening to this show also has had experience with pornography before and feels maybe it's not serving them, you'll appreciate this. I realized I needed to do something about it. And so I went at the time and I use uh, what's called a torrent and I went to a torrent website where you can basically uh, download a blueprint, source it out to the internet and saying, I'm trying to download this. So I found an audio file of a hypnosis that allows somebody to quit pornography. And I was like, well, this is cool. I'll try anything. You know, it was like 2007. And I put the headphones on. I finally download the thing. I lie down in my bed and I go, okay, this is it. I'm going to beat this thing. So I, over 10 minutes, I start guiding myself into a trance, listening to this audio file. Mm. And I was like, wow, from the top of my head down to my shoulders, all the way down to my feet. Well, I'm feeling in a pure state of bliss. This uh, exercise then walks me through a process of, okay, you're excited. You're going to get on and watch it. And then it had, they kind of in the conversation stage, this shock factor thing that happens. It's like the most valuable person you could ever care about comes into the room and sees what you're doing. Mm. And it was just so jarring in my head and I was crying and I was like, I, I think I'm free of this. And I want that for everybody because I realized today that this is a, an, a, an epidemic of sorts. We all have phones. Um, you can see this stuff on, on Twitter, frankly, it's everywhere. And so, like you said in the beginning, if this is something that the listener is experiencing, you're not alone. The really good news is that you can also beat this thing. Yeah. Like you can beat this. Yeah. And I, I think that what you were talking about being exposed to it at a young age, I think that unfortunately is getting worse. Mm. That so true. Our new generation, especially over the past three to four years, being inside more with the things with COVID, we're just living inside more often. So it's more time on the phone. And if you start on just on social media, there's a lot of sexual, like, I mean, that's really how Facebook and Instagram got big. They leveraged the dating of our mindset, that sexual mm -hmm. mindset within there. They're like, hey, this is the vanity of it, right? So that's how they grew. So there's there's people on there flaunting their things. There's OnlyFans out there. So now like a six and seven year old can be exposed to these things. Jeez. So the reason that I think it's very, you know, important that we're still talking about this right now is because we want to know really what's the the outcome of not just this one destructive behavior, right? Because if you start to look at if you if I mean, sex is such a powerful thing, right? It's how we should respect each other as male and female. Um, I know there's the whole gender thing going on yes, there. I'm not going to dip my genders. yeah. I'm not going to dip my toe into that conversation <laughs> today. I just want to say between sex between human two human beings, right, should be very respected. And I believe that if we're monetizing that, if we're and you know I know there's free will and there's people out there who are in the porn industry and they like it and I get that, but there's just this promotion and it's I think it's taking away values. Mm. I think it's taking away the identity of our society to some degree. It's eroding it. And that is filtering to other areas of life. I mean, we've seen in our country alone and other countries too, suicide, depression has risen over the past three or four years. And I believe if someone's just at home, if they're on their computer, they're on their phone and they're continuously watching pornography, that is not going to help their overall mindset, their overall state of depression or overall well-being. So that's why we feel it's an important topic. Now let's talk about how it may start for someone mm. because it could start from different upbringings. It could start from uh, different environments they're in. Um, I think if you begin to examine, and we talk about this a lot, the mirror of what pornography is showing for you, there's a lesson within there, of course. Maybe you're clinging to something like pornography because you're not doing things in other areas of your life that you know you want to do and should do. Dang. For example, let's use fitness, for example. Most people that I know who are very healthy in tip-top elite shape, you don't even have to be elite shape, you just have to be in pretty good It's just a priority. Shape. Right. Yeah. Just taking care of your health, right? Most people I know who are in that are not consuming pornography because 
they feel good about themselves neurologically and biologically. And they're also most of the time dating other attractive people as well. So therefore you really don't have to be on porn because I'll be the guy with a hand up like five years ago when I was almost 200 pounds. And you know, not that I was not dating, but I was like, listen, I'm not getting the, the, the women that I want. And so like, there's something in the back of my mind. Well, I just wasn't doing the things for myself that I could be doing. Wow. So I think that begin to use this as a mirror. Like we always talk about, there's a mirror in here. So if you can figure out why is there an addictive feeling that I have towards doing something like pornography, what is it that you're not addicted to? Mm. Yeah, if it's supplanting something, right? Like if you're saying, okay, I'm not getting the sexual results from the world that I'm living in, the way that I'm operating in, the people that I have in my life. So then someone goes and, and fills that hole with pornographic material, which is, frankly, it's super common. I'm not trying to like justify it, but it is, it is just vapidly, rampantly accessible. If that's, if that's the case, then the first step to starting to make sense of it, I agree, is looking at this instead of some sort of condemnation or you know, shame, just look at it as a mirror. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, what am I learning from this? I'm not satisfied with the dating opportunities that I have. And there's about 50% of that that you can control and then there's 50, it's just other people's willpower. So what's in the 50%? If we double click on that, what are you able to control there? Well, for one, fitness. Okay, if you're not being the optimal partner to somebody else potentially, or even just like an optimal date, then of course you're gonna look to supplant. If you're in great shape and you're living your best life, you're taking your supplements and your diet's awesome, you're probably gonna kill it on the dating market. I mean, just call it what it is. If you are not living in that way, then there is something that you can immediately tackle. And if you do that, A, you're starting to implement a new healthy habit that could replace that other thing. Uh, and then B, you're going to start to go, I'm taking control of my life. I'm going to start with fitness, top of the funnel, super easy. Just go to the gym, get a gym membership. They're 20 bucks, eat some celery, just like make some small steps <laughs> in a direction that suddenly turns the corner on where you were headed before. And if you can just start doing that, now that first mirror is kind of tackled. You're like, oh, I was consuming pornography because I was not fulfilled in my dating life or in my sexual. And it's interesting too, you said this before we went on, what happens if, um, okay, this is a very frank episode, so we're gonna use words like ejaculation and pornography, but you were saying that male testosterone, if it's constantly being uh, uh, funneled towards a male ejaculation, then the the buildup over time apparently it kind of plateaus and tapers off. Yeah, so if you, just real quickly because yeah. that's biologically. It's not that the testosterone is being funneled. It's just that our testosterone levels decrease. Men do after the age of thirty once we ejaculate if we're doing it more or if we're doing it frequently, right? So it, as soon as and this is why in a lot of professional fighters, uh, MMA boxers, they 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 tend not to have sex in their fighter camps because it lowers their testosterone mm -hmm. as they're getting to it. So, because biologically testosterone doesn't go towards when ejaculation. There you go. But it's like, if you I'm ejaculate the for, and I don't either mind, just read it. <laughs> <laughs> but it like, yeah, for so for men over the age of 30, your testosterone can decrease if you're ejaculating too much. So I think where you're going with that is like, if you're, if a guy is frequently looking at porn three to four times a day, ejaculating, it's like, well, where's your testosterone levels at to go exercise? And testosterone, it's just like a natural energy hormone. Mm. It's like, where's your energy to go off and do other productive things? So there's a biological negative consequence of looking at porn pornography way too much. I also, I mean, if we're, if we're zooming out a little bit, we're looking at what it does to the, the fabric of society. And yeah. that's not a cliche, that's a very real thing. Um, divorce rate is, is well beyond 50% in the United States. Yeah. And some of the top leading reasons behind that are finances. And it's also due to uh, infidelity and pornography addiction. A lot of times, not always, but a lot of times infidelity, uh, the precursor to that usually is a porn addiction, especially if it's hidden, if it's concealed, because there's a lot of shame associated with it. There's a lot of movements that try and lift that shame, but I don't think that's the right step either. I'm not saying people should feel shame. I'm saying we need to look at this writ large and say, what is it doing to children? What is it doing to families? Because there is nothing, and I can I can say this, like there is truly nothing like connecting with like a partner that you're all in on, that you trust with your entire soul, that you connect, there's an intimacy. It's not just uh, sex, it, there's, there's a real connection. And there is no, there's no snowball's chance in hell that you get that um, from porn, there's no way. And so 
why from the top down would there be an in, maybe an intended or a focused effort to erode society? Well, if everybody's disconnected and people aren't having kids and there's no oxytocin being shared and there's no bonding and there is no strong family units, we're just, people would become more and more fractionalized. Our strength as a, as a nation, if we're talking from kind of the American perspective, our strength as a nation is in our families. It's in the middle class and it's in our families. Mm -hmm. And if there's an intended effort to subvert that or to erode it, we all as individual societies, uh, as members of society, as individual patriots, if you will, we need to focus on that. And this isn't just some sort of like benign thing like, oh, I, I got a cheeseburger at Wendy's and I got uh, just, I'll let it go. I'll treat myself to that. This is very different. This is not fast food. This is something that has over time, the long tail of it shows an erosive effect. And so if somebody is listening to this or you know someone that needs to hear this, that's a really good first place to start is like take your own gratitude out of it and just go from the top down. If a lot of people are consuming this, maybe most people, what effects is it having? Because if it starts with the individual, you have to look at it and go, this is probably not okay. You know, and we're not looking at your dad's Playboy magazine anymore. This yeah. is, it's erosive, toxic stuff. It's a, it's a new industry. To your point, it's not the 1960s Playboy magazines anymore. It's a brand new industry. And not to, I mean, you and I could definitely go down that conspiracy hole if we wanted to. I'll just say to people, like any industry, follow the money. You want to For know real. something about some porn industry? Go look at some of the big, big time financial companies out there that are backing the porn industry. And then look what else they're tied to, some other products that they sell as well. So let's uh let's reverse though let's not go too down far that <laughs> rabbit hole people appreciate it because we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll at least skim it and everybody's like i kind of think that too but then we move on <laughs> i'll throw the breadcrumbs out there you guys can go hands on gretel on your own right? that's right <laughs> um what you were saying earlier about divorce rate and marriage because let's start and you know just hand up you and i 32 36 years old we are young we are not married and we are in good shape good looking guys from my perspective and your perspective right Thank we're just you. gonna throw it out there we're filming on video by the way so if you're not watching this on youtube you should we look great there we go boom um if you don't want to know what we look like you haven't seen it yet <laughs> so i want to back up to say the person who's like well michael brady you know i've been married for 30 mm. years lust just kind of goes away after 30 years with the same person and I wouldn't cheat on him or her, um, but you know, porn is just a way for me to kind of fill in that lust for me. Interesting. So it's like I want to talk to that person because I have talked with some clients that we have with Upgrade who've had that dilemma, right? Wow. And I'll start with, and then I'll let you go after. Yeah, no, please. That I, when I was speaking with this client, really what I was beginning to see was, and Hey, this is a generalization, but this was one client that I had a conversation with. Yeah. So we had some deep dive into why they would think that porn would be a better outcome, a better way to use their energy, right? To get that lust, right? Interesting. And it kind of circled back to some things that you and I had talked about earlier. Well, first of all, this person was a little overweight. So could they get in better shape? They could, right? Um, their partner was starting to get a little out of shape because they've been married for like 31 years. They're okay, a little on kids. mid 50 side, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're, if their partner got in shape, right. If their partner started taking their health and fitness more, would they not go to porn too? And he mm. was like, yeah, I agree with that. But there was another thing. He was like, we started to deep dive. And again, this is just one pinpoint, but around the same time, his parents around the same age had divorced. Wow. So he started to unconsciously look for ways, right. To cause turbulation, turbulence yeah. in the marriage. Wow. Um, so it was for him, it was a very interesting mirror for him to look at. Be like, man, I didn't realize that I was unconsciously just pulling myself away from the woman that I love, the woman I decided to spend my life with, because I was going to an unconscious pattern of my father and mother got divorced around this age. Literally what he'd seen. And that's, I mean, this is what we talk about so much. Ancestral programming is massive. The whole reason Upgrade got started is to clear ancestral programming of negative emotions first so you can be into the more powerful attractors. Brady brought it up earlier. Shame is... If uh, if anyone looks this up, Dr. David Hawkins, he had a book called Map of Consciousness and Power Force, Power Verse Force, excuse me. Mm. Shame is the weakest attractor out there. Wow. It's the lowest, it's the lowest no weak kidding. attractor. Yeah, it's down there on the low. Like even guilt and you know, like anger is above shame. Shame is how human beings have zero energy to core 
to go towards things. Seriously. Right. That, I feel like that's like one of the top most emotions that one would end up experiencing after consuming porn. That's super interesting. Very interesting, right? And if we want to go back to the conspiracy theory about all that other stuff right. right there, well, what is the emotion that we can program into your human being after they're consuming X, Y, and Z product service? Interesting. And now all the topics are like, I mean, this is kind of weird, but you know, like a lot of it's centered on like family stuff like step siblings and a lot of that like i don't know i'm again this is you you infer a lot from like instagram memes and jokes but a lot of it's around like like step siblings and stuff and it's like yeah. okay i don't think that society should be focused in consuming content like that like there is clearly something that is not serving people that's a weird embedded suggestion to right. give to someone right like let's look at pornography that's including a sibling that is not related to you but you find them attractive so let's just Let's go down that route. Yeah, hole, let's right? erode that over time. Um, but I actually want to step away from that because that's no, just that's like, fair. But I think categories. it is it's categories. But I, I think what we're really saying is that there is there is a laundry list of reasons to consider this in your life today. And I think most people listening to this have had some experience with it. And so it's like we're not coming here, you know, on the backs of like angels and golden wings here. We're we're really just saying like this is a, a good opportunity for the listener right now to assess where am I at with this subject. Because everybody is somewhere with this subject. And if you're someone out there who are like, dude, I'm good. Yeah. Like, I don't have any porn addiction or anything like that. First of all, awesome. More yeah. power to you. Well, I would still say that it's your responsibility as a human being. This is just my opinion. I'm going to share it as my opinion. Your responsibility as a human being to help someone else out there and see if you can like, share, or share share this podcast if you want to, or begin to have those tough conversations with someone, a friend or family member you think that might be addicted to it. Because there's so many neurological... Um, I mean, I'm going to go a little deep here. Please. Right? If anyone's ever heard of the M field, this guy named Rupert... Uh, Shedrick. I'm going to mispronounce that guy, but you guys can look up <laughs> M field. Sounds German. It stands for morphogenic field, right? So these M fields exist within human consciousness. Every time we break a barrier, right? Roger Bannister broke an M field on the four, four minute, minute mile. mile. And then six months after that, eight or it was like almost 80 people broke the four minute right. mile, something like that too. So he broke an M field. When we went to the moon, we broke an M field. A bunch of people happened with that. So human beings, what they figured out, once we break that M field, right, things begin to happen in waves. Now, that can happen in obviously a positive energy and a negative energy. Where I'm going with this in the pornographic topic that we're at right now today is that, well, let's take divorce rate as a small subset. It was not as high 20 years ago mm. as it is today. And can you say that pornography is a, catalyst if not one of the main contributors to that we could say that i mean that causation doesn't always equal correlation right seems it seems like it but the rise in porn addiction and the rise in divorce rates at the same time it's like accessibility like let's just look at that and the rise of what's going on in our bedded suggestion society so mm. this is all to say that you got to be aware of it. And why I'm asking if you're good out there if you you're like hey man i don't got an addiction i'm good michael i'm good brady <laughs> yeah. help someone else out Right, exactly. because that M field is around us at all time. That M field is being broken around us consciously and unconsciously by every individual, every human being out there. So it is our responsibility. If you want the world to be a better place, it sounds a little cliche. If you want the world to be a better for place, real. start with yourself, and then of course begin to help others too. So what's it stand for? M field, morphogenic field, I believe. Morphogenic field. Yeah, morphogenic field. So then someone today is like basically aware of now. You now you're aware of your M field. And you could be in two camps. One is you're like, hey, I'm good. This isn't my problem. But I guarantee you know somebody that for sure, even if they're not broadcasting it, is dealing with this in some way. Yeah. So now your M field can kind of set a precedent for other people around you. I think your point is killer on that. Because if you're in the camp where this is something that uh, the listeners currently experiencing, watching, consuming, struggling with, you have an opportunity to assess your M field. Will you take steps and begin to like break it down because you deserve better than that. That's the whole basis of upgrade is that there is so much of your mind that you're not using. And if you can start to resolve the emotional conflicts and the signals that your unconscious mind gives you anytime you encounter porn, anytime you are making a decision that leads up to it, or you are, you know, someone's wallowing and, and experiencing that lowest emotional state, which is shame. Anytime that you are encountering these things, be aware now that you are approaching a threshold. Your M field has a, 
you can breach this thing. You can break your four minute mile. And I promise you it is possible. And I promise your friends that it is possible. This thing serves as a, it, it kind of wires the mind after a while. And this is a very real thing. People become addicted to porn. Oh, yeah. it, uh, it wires the background of it. It changes your emotional uh, sexual states. And people talk about how they, when they're in an intimate act with somebody, they can't even perform because they've been so rewired yeah. from the consumption over a long period of time to like, oh, I need it. You know, it's got to be all these things. It sets this unrealistic precedent for yeah, what their, intimacy their arousal goes down, their, ar not, yeah. their ability to like enjoy it. And then, you know, it, it just erodes it. So that is the long tail of it. No one should be there. Yeah. No one should experience those things. It's not healthy. So your M field today is, is I don't even know if I'm correctly, you know, conjugating that, but it, uh, I feel like we need a Jamie on this. We need <laughs> like what? We need a Jamie. I need to be. It's like a. Checker. It's actually just like a J field, and the whole time it was called a J field. Dude. I know it's you an didn't M know field. It was J field. I know it's an M field. I am positive on that. <laughs> I just don't know if it stands for morphogenic or morphogenetic. Um, some I need a Jamie. Someone. I need a Jamie. Check. Breach it today, though. <laughs> yeah. This is the chance, you know, <laughs> because I don't think people talk about this enough, and when they do, it's clinical, or it, maybe it's someone cool like Dr. Andrew Huberman. But the casualness of being like, yeah, you know what? Most people look at this and a lot of people that do are likely addicted to it. So the, the, the best thing to do is to accept that you can make a step in it today, make a change. And I, I think we should talk a, a few different steps out as to what people could actionably do to say, okay, I'm going to breach this conversation in my head for the first time. I'm not hiding it anymore. I'm just going to address it and see if I can fix it. Yeah, I would love to dive into some. And, and, you know, William did dive into resolution formula a little bit on last week's podcast. Uh, we didn't go through the entirety of it. Those who, who are in our trainings, resolution formula can be used on anything. It, mm. Absolutely anything. Because what can I learn from this? Everything that we do, every program that we run was started out of a place of love. I promise you that. It's the wildest thing that I've ever learned in my four and a half years now with mental programming, with upgrade, with training almost a thousand clients at this point is that every program started out of a place of love, even something crazy like a heroin addiction, right? Mm. It started out of a place of maybe trying to fill a void for a human being that wasn't getting wow. maybe like, uh, you know, that self love or the, something from a parent love. So they used a drug as just to fill the void. Holy right? cow. It all starts with love. So it all starts with a program, right? So if there's a program that you are addicted to pornography, we're using that as an example, we just need to change the content within that program. So how do you begin to do that? First, ask yourself, when did I decide to create this for myself? It's the very first question after you define, excuse me, it's, it's question number two. For question number one, we've already defined it. What's the problem slash negative emotion? Mm. Then number two is when did I decide to create for myself? Now, that's a challenging question. Right. I, I promise you. When did you decide <laughs> that someone when you were nine years old pulled open a computer and showed you something, right? Sometimes that's... I, I got a computer when I was 11. Like my dad bought it and he was like, here you go, son, you know, learn computer things. Exactly. Well, the guy he bought it from That's had like a terabyte of pornographic content on the computer. And yeah. so it's like sometimes people's first encounter with this is not solicited. It's not their, so it not their fault, right? Right. But it is their choice of responsibility now to change the program. Mm. So that's where that question, it can be a little stinging. When did I decide to create this? Because while it may not have been the fault that it was started, it's still your program now. Fair enough. So how do you get to that? And that's freedom, man. Like the more you can push towards when you decided to create it, that's really a question of freedom. Yeah. Because there's freedom in that question of like, oh, so I, I created this at some point. Well, let me just like a computer program. I know people have taken computer science with the binaries, the zeros and ones with the bits and the bytes. Like you can change those. Those are decision codes in the unconscious mind. So, Amazing. and if you get back to that, so something like pornography, when did I decide to create this addiction, behavior, lust, whatever for the pornography? That's the starting point. Then we've said this many times. What can you learn from it, right? What can you get past with... What do you really want instead? Um, I talked about this earlier with the client example, how he was just, you know, he was going to porn because he felt like he was losing interest with his his wife. Um, by the way, just, you know, happy story. They're super in love again. Heck yeah. Yeah, they're very well uh, off and they resolve the I, I still get text messages from them sometimes, like, thank you so much. Um, That's amazing. You know who they are, <laughs> but I'm not going to say on this podcast. Um, where I'm going with this, guys, is that when you can learn from that, 
that is where the freedom really begins to kick in because then you're like, okay, I can learn from it. What do I want now instead slash next? What do I want to do and feel such things? That's next? huge. Not just quit it for the sake of quitting it. Quit it so that you can learn whatever you were avoiding before and then you just move forward powerfully. I love that. Yeah. Now, these are questions that Upgrade has formulated, right? There's plenty other behaviors and things that we could say to as well. Um, we talked about this earlier. There's so many freaking cool apps out there. There's one app that I know about. It's called Stick. <laughs> I've, I've had uh, friends use it for quitting cigarettes. I've had friends use it uh, for, you know, burning calories more. They're like, if you don't burn calories... Uh, they have your credit card on file and then they're automatically just donated to a political party that you do not want to donate money to. <laughs> That's so wild. <laughs> so, That's so crazy. It's I, like if you don't go to the gym, Joe Biden gets a hundred bucks. Exactly. Like, is there a better motivation? Not not a political commentary, yeah, but that would motivate me. I wouldn't even give him a dollar, so I'd be like <laughs> <laughs> I definitely would be like, oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to the gym. Yeah, but I mean, that's a little bit of pain motivation, and on this com and on this, uh, you know, this platform, we talk a lot about pleasure motivation. But it still can be powerful enough to at least get you out of that motivation, out of the the away from. That's like, yeah, wow, dude, that's huge. I think that, like that right there shows somebody listening exactly why you would want to do that. Let's talk. I mean, the why is obvious. It doesn't serve you. The why is obvious. You found our podcast because you're someone that has tapped into something different. And so here you are, you're understanding things about your mind, the front part, the operating part, the conscious mind, and then the background and the unconscious mind. Does this stuff serve either of those hemispheres? And there's a little bit of like a high that people get out of it, but there's a lesson to be learned because people are consuming it. So learn that lesson. Yeah. What is it that you're avoiding? What is it you're trying to fill? Is it that you have a discontentment in your relationship? Is it that you're not being your most optimal partner? Is it that your health has been kind of on the back burner of priorities? If it's any of these things or a bunch of stuff we haven't talked about, the second you embrace it and the second you choose to learn from it, you might find that the, the tentacles, the shackles that some addictions have over people, you might find a couple of those links just break. And if that happens, you're gonna feel better about it. You're gonna take more action, actionable steps to improve your intimacy to get away from porn and to focus your neurology on things that enrich, that serve, that strengthen our society, strengthen the individual. And then you just keep winning. Then you get more money and then good things happen. Suddenly you're on a yacht. Why would you care about porn when you're on a yacht? I hope not. You know, <laughs> you imagine you're <laughs> just like not. in the basement. <laughs> I would, if any of my friends are on a yacht with me and you're caring more about porn, I'm going to help you personally. I'm going to toss you off the deck. I'm going I'm to help him personally in the next five minutes to get into the Golly. <laughs> Oh man. I, would, I would say too, like for the, I want to give this to, and I'm not a parent, so I'm going to come from that angle. I've said that to before it's for the parents out there who are raising children in this society, please, please, please be aware of the content, uh, that your, your children are consuming. There's a lot of embedded suggestions in movies and TV shows online that naturally just trigger the mind which is, hey, we're still very biological, right? We're still very cavemen who were sex is just our one of our main pri primary drivers. Just, just happens, to just triggers. So a lot of marketing companies, a lot of companies out there know those. So they'll use embedded suggested words to trigger the curiosity of someone who's 12 years old to eight year, 18 years old and unfortunately even younger to fall down this rabbit hole. They click on one link, they click on the next link, and all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. And it's like, what did they stumble upon? Right. So, and it could happen in five minutes. You could be out of the room making dinner. It is on the iPads. It is on nearly every app. Like yeah. parents, be aware. It is pervasively accessible to a six-year-old. And then I would also, as my step, because I've had um, some clients who've been there like, all right, well, I'm aware of it. What do I do? I was like, listen, the very first thing I would suggest you do is have the chat with your, your child, right? Yeah, good for Begin you. to have the conversation with them about what it is. And, you know, explain to them, depending on their age, right? Because right. if there's going to be a conscious understanding, you know, the four levels of learning, it's like, well, if a seven-year-old may not understand the whole reproduction system, right? It's yeah, <laughs> but there's now teachers, there are educators, and you see things on PragerU, and you see them on Project Veritas, where teachers in the education system are getting exposed for, in that insulated classroom environment, pushing certain topics and making kids aware, talking about stuff they shouldn't be talking about. Yeah. Kids should be doing freaking Legos, and climbing trees and scraping their knees up and stuff. And, and yet, you know, we have to be aware that everything from the screens that you give kids to the educators that kids are put in front of, there is a minefield of things 
yeah, you know, I'm getting ready to in the next few years start a family. Mm-hmm. I mean, I look at that. I look at in the mouth and I go, that is terrifying. There's yeah, there are some stuff that terrified that in AI to a little degree. Right. <laughs> but so I mean, we have to take those steps. It is our prerogative. It you know, it is our obligation as uh, parents, as would be parents, soon to be parents, adults in society, people that want to contribute and grow this thing, evolving our our, our humanities uh, writ large. One of these viruses uh, has spread very far. And so you as an individual have a responsibility to tackle that, to insulate you and your families from it, and decouple from it, and you can do it. Yeah, and I would say that the reason I'm, I'm happy that you and I are continuing this conversation because I know we have it behind closed doors, but now we're bringing it to light. Mm. Um, it's not talked about in the legacy media. Totally this, not. This virus is not talked about in the main media. Thankfully, there's, there's, you know, we just saw the movie Sound of Freedom. Um, there's good people out there who are exposing how the porn industry is really, you know, getting into, I mean, porn industry leads to sex trafficking. I don't even think we should go to there because that's a huge topic that probably deserves its own other podcast. Yeah, but it's not a jump. It's a, it's a path. It's definitely, I mean, that's how someone can get there, unfortunately. I mean, that's, that's, that's what we were inferring earlier. I think people pick up on that, especially if you've seen Sound of Freedom. Exactly. Um, what I would say to go back to the topic, if you're a parent, you're like, how do I have this talk, this conversation with my child? Mm. Maybe on Instagram or Facebook and just saw something and they let them down a rabbit hole. I would start again from the biological standpoint of like, listen, you're a boy, you're a girl, and the reproduction system is in us. It's just, it's in our neurology, it's in our biology, right? So it's not a bad thing. Right. It's not a bad thing that you were curious. It's not a bad thing that you felt something, anything about it like that. Start with them so they immediately feel good in a way that it wasn't like their fault, they're wrong, anything like that. And just begin to have it from that perspective, like all these normal, natural feelings, they're good. And that's how life is being created around you at all times. So start with there. And then from there, you know, depending on your value system, your religion, there's so many other factors totally. that you can go from there. Yeah. Um, you can take it how you want to tell the child to have new behaviors and habits after that. Dude, I think that's beautiful. That's a great starting point. And then it really does come down to the individual's autonomy. We're not going to tell you how to, how to get on beyond that. But I think starting at saying, hey, you know what? This isn't shameful. We are biological humans with a precedent typically to reproduce. So don't be afraid of it, but just understand it's not the time. And if your body is a car and it requires good fuel and maybe part of what that car's maintenance requires is that sort of intimacy, that connection with a good person when you pick them, the inverse of that with porn with some sort of thing is like putting like Coca-Cola in the gas tank and being like, oh yeah, this is what it was meant for. It was not. That is a poor substitute. It doesn't get the job done. True intimacy with someone that you love is a million times far and away better for every single person on the planet than than some of this synthetic nonsense. Yeah. So, so I hope uh, if you are a um, listener or viewer out there and you are struggling with this type of addiction, I hope this episode helped you today. If you know of someone, please, guys, share this with someone that you think could be benefit for them as well. Um, and also check out you know, more of our products that really begin to help on the mental programming side. As I was saying earlier, a, you know, quote unquote addictions always start with some kind of mental program that we're running unconsciously. And if you learn from that, you can learn from so much more and you can change your life in other ways. Brady, anything else to add, my man? Life is good and it gets better every day, you guys. All right. See you. Take it easy.